Mary Villanueva Board and Equal Opportunity Liaison. In your agenda packet was the EEO statistical report. This report is prepared in conjunction with the biennial EEO 4 report that we just submitted. It covers July 1st, 2009 through June 30th, 2011, because that is the federal reporting period. Just a couple of things I want to draw to your attention, um, and it's basically on pages 8 and 9 of your agenda. At the time of this report, we had 1,184 employees that covers full and part-time. It does not cover the elected officials. The average wage was $37,995, and the average length of service of, our, of all of our employees is 10.2 years. Uh, as you can see, we don't experience a lot of turnover. People tend to come and stay. If you look on page 9, um, we've included the civilian labor force statistics for you to show that in, the, in 2004, which is the latest data available, the um, minorities were 14.1% of the population. And in 2010, the number increases to 227 And for females, it moves from 48% to 50.2%. Our employment rate for females is 66.1, which is in, um, higher than the population average, and then for minorities is 22.5%, which is just slightly under um, the 22.7 for the population. If you go a little bit further down, though, when you look at the earnings statistics, um, we still have a little bit of a little bit to go as far as earnings. Women still earn only an average of 82.4% of um, their male counterparts. African Americans at 72.6, Hispanics at 87.6, Native Americans at 89.1%. So we have some room for growth in that area. When you look at the categories that we employ people in, we are still slightly under in the officials and administrator categories with only 18.4% are minorities and 39.5% are women. Um, we do continue to work in all of these areas through expanded recruitments and working with um, HR and department heads. When you have an opportunity to look at the charts, um, if you look at page 21, that will give you a breakout of the overall workforce um, in all of the EEO 4 reporting categories. And then following that are all the individual um, functions that you can take a look at. So if you have any questions or comments, I'd be glad to try and answer them. Jerry, on, oh. on page 9 down under conclusion, Mm -hmm. Where you talk about it concerns is that the representation is also reflected in the managerial ranks. Right. And I don't know how we're ever going to change that because if you look look at those ranks, it's dismal. And uh, what can we do? Because it's been like four percent, and it hasn't changed and since I've been here six nine, ten months, I haven't seen any managerial people come before us. There's not a lot of turnover in the officials, administrators, or the professional categories. If you look at the history of the county and you look at those two categories, there's very little turnover, which is part of the problem. Um, with the new workforce diversity um, policy that the board approved back in, I think it was March or April, um, we've put in place a workplace diversity committee that's composed of the HR director, the finance and management services director, the EEO officer, and myself. And we're starting to meet and plan ways where we can expand our recruitment, um, you know, offer diversity training, just make people aware in general of what our statistics are and where we need to improve, and then to get ideas from the department heads. Um, on how to improve those numbers. So we are working on it. But there is not a lot of turnover in those classifications. 
excellent. You know, one of the things that I noticed in this report was <coughs> that um, it says in 2009, Ms. Keegan had per capita personal income of uh, 27,792, 1953rd in the state, now mm -hmm. 83 counties. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty far down the list. Mm -hmm. And um, in 1991, we were 40th in per capita personal income. So yeah, we, down. We, moved, we moved in the wrong direction in the ways. And I, yeah. I just want to draw attention to that because I suspect that it's probably directly related to the education levels in this county. Anymore. Yeah, that would be interesting to find out. I don't know that that's the reason. But I don't believe it, but I, I know that our percentage of college graduates is pretty low. Um, the current professionals on the state 21, we seem to be doing very good as far as minorities and that. Um, because we have so many in these other categories, is, is that what's holding the wages back? I mean, when we take the 89% of that based on each each individual category, or is that because we have so many minorities in the, in the lower down thing? There, proportionately, yes, there are more minorities in the lower paid classifications. So it's, it's what's really holding the wages down, is because we don't have any, you know, the pay per person, that's to say average of 50. Well, the average salary that Bob was referring to our average salary is, doesn't have anything to do with that paraprofessional category. It's an overall salary from every category combined. Yeah, so you compare it to the rest of the state. Yeah, so since we have a lot more uh, non-minority in the top classes, that that tends to make it so their pay don't look as well, right? Um, and on page 23, this is more the people that come before us, right? Um, the, the officials and the administrators. The officials and the administrators, on page 23, that would be um, the county administrator, Elisa Chaco, and myself, our representative on that page. Uh, it shows and, what, seven total or something? Or um, Bernard or Nash, the EO officer, and um, he's the finance and management service. Is there a, because we have a lot more directors in a lot of other categories, is that, so that Right, but if you look, like the Brookhaven administrator is going to be on the Brookhaven chart, um, it's um, you know, the health department director is on the health department page. These, these breakouts are functional breakouts. This is administration office, and there's airport, drain, clerk employment and training. So you have to look at the function. And then you'll see that director is being reflected in there. But again, the elected officials are not in this report because they're not part of our federal reporting. Ms. Walmart, I'm very, when you do the uh, diversity training, what exactly goes into diversity training here for the county? <coughs> We don't do um, any diversity training. We do anti-harassment and hostile work environment training at this point. We are looking at um, some diversity training. Um, I've talked to the county administrator about it, and we're looking at um, actually purchasing some diversity training, possibly um, a set of videos or something that we can supplement our own materials with so that we can do um, large-scale diversity training. But right now, we pretty much focus on um, anti-harassment and yeah, I think that uh, that's imperative. Uh, and you know, you know, white male managers in positions mm -hmm. followed by white females and black females and black males in one down I think that's something that you when know, we talk about that person, that's something that needs to be addressed as to that, you know, that demographic, why the demographic is what it is. I'm sure that if we did a more stringent job of recruiting and practice what we preach when we talk about diversity, 
we find more qualified African American males than females and Hispanics and Native Americans that can do the job as well as white men. That's the topic. So, I mean, that's as straightforward as that is. You know, uh, there's no real push on it, but it is what it is. And we're looking at shifts in the population too. I mean, if you look at the increase in minorities from 14.1% um, to 22.7%, that's mainly due to the Latino and Asian population increase. Um, Latinos are the fastest growing population in the US, which I'm sure you've probably all heard on the news, but in our county in particular, that increase from the 14.1 to the 22.7 is due to Asians and Latinos. Yes, I think that uh, what we really need to do is to take a good look at uh, uh, whether or not we, we truly want to make this an equal opportunity place to work. Because uh, we do bring value to, to uh, our county. And like I was looking at the convention and this was bureau, there are only four people there. When I look at a picture and I see the diversity, I feel so much better about it than just looking. You've got four people there. You could have a makeup of four different nationalities in that group, and it would present a better picture to the public to let them know that indeed you're, you're working on it. But when you have a um, duo uh, uh, with four white females, you, it means that there's nothing going to be done about it. I think as, an, as a reality check, um, a minority person of whatever has the ability to get a higher paying job with equal qualifications. So in many cases, there are very sharp and educated people but they can go to a bigger paying market. And so it makes it hard when we do everything equally, when they do everything equally, um, many times applicants will go over to make most. Mr. Jager? Yeah. Uh, do we give many applications to flying already? When we post more directors and managers, uh, upper management. We don't have, um, within the EEO department, we do not have uh, tracking software at this point. We do get information from the human resources department on what the applicant pool looks like um, for each one of the recruitments. But at this point, we're not able to track those applicants through the process to see where it stops, you know, um, if they make it through the first stage, second stage, testing, first interview, second interview. We're hoping to do that. Um, HR has some new software that they've implemented recently, and I think with the new financial system we're looking at, that's also tying into HR. And so hopefully within the next year, we'll have the ability to track that applicant all the way through to see what's happening. Then we can start looking at whether or not we're getting the applicants who need, first of all. Yeah, um, like Mar was saying, uh, I've heard the same thing that we're having. It's hard to get minorities to come to a small community. Do we find that to be true? Because of the pay scale, you can you go to Grand Rapids and pay a lot more for the same job. So we're having to compete with yeah. bigger markets. Without, without the data, I couldn't, you know. I so we need more data. Yeah. I wouldn't want to make that determination. Anybody else? Mr. Mahoney. I just wanted to thank the EEO office for presenting the statistics because it's not simply a look at the county actually is mirroring and not uh, anecdotal of how we put some data that we can look at. And uh, is that policy that moves in the direction of the government? Thank you. And I think the more data you can get, the better it is. If you can find where in the process situations right. happen, it's much easier to make decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Just record show that uh, Commissioner Snyder is present.
Public comment. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the committee on an agenda item? I apologize for being late, but I just got in from the CMH meeting. See no public comment, we move into items for consideration. WM11 slash 10-133. It's been moved and seconded. Questions? See none all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. WM11 slash 10-134 from administration. Double. Second. Moved and seconded. <clears throat> Questions? Are, are these positions already filled or are we going to have to call? These are positions that there was um, an error in the fiscal year 2012 budget. That's why they're all three on the same motion. The first position was a the, in the reorganization of community corrections. Um, the, um, the classification didn't match what we entered in the state grant. So we had to change the budget to match the grant. The second one was an oversight. Those two positions were left out and had been approved to go into the um, adopted budget. And then the final one was um, the court notification clerk. The, court, the district court administrator requested that it be a court clerk so that um, others can do it, not specify it to one classification. So um, the, the agricultural equipment operators, those are filled positions. They're just changing those um, classifications because there was specific there was specifications that required one to put chemicals on and the other couldn't. They wanted to generalize the classification so that the two can do the same amount of work. That's why there's two different classifications. So there wouldn't be pay raises or anything. No, there are no. There is. Um, I think the classification might be two cents. I mean that they just tried to get to a close classification, but um, I don't want to mislead you. But it's not significant. It's it's no impact. Mr. Solnit. Yeah, you know, I'm just curious about this court notification clerk. So Ooh. that rather than being a court notification clerk, they just it's just a regular well, clerk. Yes, yes. And right. they so will everybody do court notification, in, yes. Everybody in that any one of the clerks will be able to take care of it. Yes. So can I and can I ask one question? Just because I was talking to somebody about this this morning, but how Maybe Nancy. Yeah, she's going to here. How was that notification um, process work? I mean, do you have any data for that? I mean, does it help a lot or a little? Or? Uh, yes, Nancy Hunter, District Court Administrator. Uh, we've been tracking the progress on this since we started the pilot pro uh, this pilot program almost a year ago. Um, it appears that, well, first of all, what we did is a cost analysis of what it costs to do a fail to appear warrant. And that's basically what we wanted to do is we want the defendants to appear for court. So if you have, like, you get a automated phone call from your doctor's office that says you have an appointment tomorrow as a reminder, and you go, oh, yes, I do have a, a doctor's appointment, thank you very much. Well, we couldn't do an automated system here because some of the people that come to court for it, for instance, like a domestic violence defendant, um, might give the girlfriend's phone number because that's the only one he knows, and then we're calling the victim and telling her to come to court when it's fact not we're not supposed to have contact. You know, we don't want those to have contact. Um, also, if there's if somebody's coming to court and they have multiple cases, we only want to call them once instead of seven times. Uh, we also need a person to review the register of actions before making the phone call. So if they call them and in fact there's an uh, order for adjournment or request for adjournment already filed but the judge hasn't, it hasn't been processed because the judge hasn't signed. We don't want to remind those people to come to court. There's several reasons why you can't have the, you know, the automated system to do this project. Um, what we did is we looked at cost analysis, what it costs to do one, fail to appear warrant and uh, the cost was like $213 in total time and assets for one warrant. We looked at the numbers when we started this program. We looked at the number when the court of vacation clerk started calling, and we cut our numbers down. And also, the sheriff can speak to it saves jail beds because they're not having to arrest these people. 
you know, sometimes some of the responses from the people that we're calling is, oh my gosh, thank you for calling. I thought it was Thursday, not Tuesday. Um, I thought it was in the afternoon, not in the morning. You know, if you don't appear in the morning or in the afternoon, we're very good at kicking out that warrant and getting it to the judge for signature. And of course, the sheriff's department is having to arrest, and then, you know, the, then they have to book them. And then if it's late in the afternoon, they're putting them in overnight and then a jail bed. So the whole thing, we're including the sheriff's department and the district court, it looks like it's a very cost effective system in the study we've done over the previous year. Does that explain the well, answer? Sort of, but just you have a number. Um, I do have some numbers, what it, but it, it really is you have to look at the, the where we started. We used to do double digit um, bench warrants daily uh, because we have you know the <coughs> four judges in the, in the courtrooms and the two magistrates. We, since we started this majority of the days we're doing single digit um, bench warrants. So that's, you know, without the numbers right in front of me, I can get those to you. So every time that happened, it was 200, on average, 200, over 200 dollars. Yes, with every warrant we're saving, by every warrant we're not doing, the cost analysis is about 200 dollars per warrant. So if you just did one a day, it would it, and more than pay for itself. Yes, okay. and we also took an account the sheriff's department, the jail bed, and the time that they take to process a warrant to book a defendant and all that. And I only use for one overnight. I didn't use if they were arrested on a Friday and then they have to keep them Monday. I used the, the least very conservative numbers to to come to that. Well, the reason I the reason I ask is because this was one of the very few new positions that got authorized in the new budget. Right, but we're trying not to be, um, you know, tie it to one specific right, duty, yeah. because if that person's off, I don't want the phone calls to not happen. Right. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries WM11 one slash 10, dash 135 administration. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Questions? Um, 6H, which would be page 79, um, it doesn't say how long before the administrator or is notified or us on when they're going to, you know, if there's a violation. This is H is, um, 6H is the department director's responsibility and they're responsible to monitor the system's policies and procedures within their department. Right, but if there's a but, but if someone doesn't use it, um, you're not notified. It doesn't say how long before you're notified or we're notified if someone has abused it in the system. We will. Um, we would know fairly quickly if someone's abused it because we're going to get the. There will be a master record each month that will show any abuse, and the the departments are also responsible to keep um, records of what they're doing and have attachments. If you read through here, you see that over and over. But um, I think that it's immediate notification to the, um, to the, I, there's a term here for the person that's in charge of overseeing this, the program administrator well, in the accounting office. Well, I would like to see it where you would be immediately notified also. I, yeah, I mean, and we can put that in. I'm something. sure I will be. But I hate to see something pushed in yeah. the rug. And then it says in there, towards the last, it says, um, what is abuse? Now, it says, did it, I don't know where it's at in here exactly. It says it's abuse, but it doesn't say how many times it's abuse. And it's in 6H2. Oh, okay. So, um, but it says abuse, but it never it says um, how, many, how many times before it's considered abuse. I think once. I mean, yeah, but I, mean, I, mean, I understand that, but it, it should say once is abuse because what else if someone else says, well, you know, it's only a thing of gas and, you know, we're going to look at this time. It doesn't move up to you. It should, it should, abuse is once. Right. I mean, there's zero tolerance on this. I think that's clear because I think that they're signing, a, they're signing, a, each person will sign a form that is saying that they will not ever abuse it. So any abuse will be. Um, they will be pulled. I can just, I can say in experience as well because I, I had a P card forever 
um, in my former position and with my, um, there was very, very little abuse because this was so tracked so closely through the, um, through the MasterCard system. I mean, the county, the county is informed of everything that's happening throughout this. So um, compared to having petty cash in a drawer and someone using a credit card, there's, there's a whole lot um, closer monitoring. I think all I'm trying to say is I'd like to yeah. know one time is abuse to me uh, that, and you being yeah. notified immediately. Yeah. A week. Yeah. I would like to see that. Yeah. Program. Okay. Uh, I, can, I commend you because some of the travel reimbursements that I've seen go through the county were very poorly documented. And this, I think, is a huge improvement. Anybody else? All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. WM 11 slash 10 dash 136 administration. Or Move is supported. Comments? 136. 136. Aye. If I may, I'd like to suspend. Judy, would you want to give us a little? Did I make a motion to suspend the rules? This is going to be huge. We're on the veterans, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Judy Calfrey, coordinator. Um, this motion that's before you is um, actually the third or fourth motion that's been before you to extend um, the lease at the current veterans uh, facility. As you know, the um, veterans facility is moving out to a, a, a facility out by the airport. Um, they have had some difficulty getting um, things started in terms of getting the, um, the work done there. So they have requested that we um, extend their lease. As you can see, they've got a couple dates in here. They're obviously hoping that they'll get some work done in the first few months. And if they don't get it done in the first few months, then they've got another extension built in so that we're not coming back to request an extension every three or four months. Um, as you uh, may be aware, um, the county has been uh, working with the veterans facility to um, determine what's going to happen after that lease um, expires out by the airport. That um, work is still um, going on with the Veterans Administration. Um, we're hopeful that we'll have a, a good resolution going forward. Yes, Judy. Uh, each time this is referred to, it just says, near the airport where what is the address um oh, where is it? <laughs> well actually no i i will have to get the address for you but i can tell you when you pull into the airport off um Sturia drive it's the first building on the left on the right um that's right there if that helps and it's the old horizons but building my concern was uh for the veterans to have to go way out there has consideration been given to that because some of them don't have transportation and i don't think the bus goes by there 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 is um the veterans center is working with jim coons in the transit department to work out those arrangements so that the veterans are not um essentially stuck without transportation so um i've been in those meetings as well and, and i'm sure mr garrison and mr skolnick who are at the advisory committee can talk about those concerns as well okay, any other questions? Mr. Snyder? Has the county started to look into the use of the current facility after they vacated it? I can't speak to that question at this um, point in time. We really, we really haven't because the whole, um, with the current contract for Mr. Um, Keeling, he's, um, he's hoping that he'll still be able to use it as residential. 
I mean, that's the whole <coughs> still use it as residential. So I, I just wanted to uh, expand on what Commissioner Garazinski said. There, there's still um, some hope that that veterans medical facility will still be on our property someday. Um, the problem, just to bring you up, if you don't remember, was that we really needed a 20 year lease to pay for the the new construction and they weren't willing to do that. <clears throat> but there's efforts uh, underway to try to, it's possible they can do an exception and do that. Um, this is the best time for them to do it just because of the federal budget, but um, it really makes sense to be here. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Period. WM 11 slash 10 is 137. So, so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. WM 11 slash 10 is 138. The prosecutor? So moved. Moved and seconded. Questions, comments? Is this the same uh, grant that uh, prosecutor Tag was uh, referring to earlier this year the gangs and the street environment? Uh, 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 it's not. It's not. It's not. It's Judy Calvary and Cornbeer, you know, this is not a grant that we had um, worked with with Pastor Greer that um, the county was notified that we were not a recipient of that grant about two weeks ago. Only three were awarded nationwide um, of the eight, and there were 81 applicants. And quite frankly, we did not meet the threshold of the amount of violence that you needed to qualify for that grant. But on a positive note, um, there is there is good news. Um, the Ottawa County received a second chance demonstration grant. And this year what they have done um, is they have included um, Muskegon County in that second year of that grant. What that grant will do is it will link um, uh, felons that have been released from the prison as well as felons that are going to be referred from the Muskegon County Jail after release for subsidized employment for a, a, sh for a short period of time, 90 days, on um, the hopes that they'll um, work out and get um, and be, uh, stay on the payroll of that employer as well as um, working with Reverend Greer through GBS in the Heights um, for those families um, to have mentoring and other programs with the idea that if you can stop um, the behavior with the children and link that family back into the community with that returning felon, that some of the resultant violence in the neighborhood will cease. So it's a different a approach if that works in the Muskegon Heights area in the next year of the second chance grant, we will expand that to the city of Muskegon through an agreement with the county of Ottawa. So to call my attention to say you didn't meet the buying threshold to say yes, sir. to get money. Yes, sir. Okay, that's the good news. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, yes, it is. But you know, from somebody who has to really write things dramatically, it sometimes is, it, it, it's an odd perspective. Yes. But that, it, but that is really why we did not meet the violent threshold compared to the other communities who are looking at two to three homicides a day. I think we're all in, in agreement there. Is there anybody opposed to that one? Motion carries. 
contract that we've had in the past but this is just reflective of cost increases uh, at the state and the local level as well and the cost increases are primarily personnel but I just wanted to make sure that we had in the budget I guess, that we were about it. thank you any other questions seeing none in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries Bill 111 slash 10 140 from the sheriff. So moved. Been moved and seconded. Mr. Jager? I don't comprehend what this proposal even is. Commissioner. Commissioner. What is it? It's oh food. the sheriff's food. here. I'm <laughs> That's not a good thing. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> County Sheriff, um, commissary is something that we're required to provide through the jail. It's basically the uh, inmate store. They're given a, a list of various items that they can order out of their funds that they have. Um, snacks, uh, socks, uh, different hygiene items. Um, and then as money gets deposited into their account by family members or friends, they can draw out of that account and purchase the commissary items. Can so you make money on it? We do. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I don't know if you want to expand on that. <laughs> <laughs> I do, you know. <laughs> the, uh, the money that is generated doesn't go into the general fund. It has to be spent on uh, inmate programming and uh, stuff for inmate uh, um, like recreation, like if we have a television right now in one of the cell blocks or something, we can replace it out of the funds from this, et cetera. Mr. Pierzyski. Are books included in that magazine? <laughs> no. Um, books and magazines are, uh, are uh, handed out through our book card, our library, which is done by volunteers, the uh, jail ministry volunteers. Okay. So that is still happening? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Stolick. Sheriff, are you, are you looking for um, donations of books, or do you have any books? We always accept donations of books. They have to be soft-covered books. Um, we, we can't take any hard-covered books. Um, magazines. But what we do is our volunteers go through them and make sure that they're an uh, you know, appropriate type of reading material. There's no actual There's no potential. Uh, yeah, get, um, but yeah, we are always accepting books. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Most curious. Then we went one one slash ten guys one forty one from the sheriff. Right. Who the second? Questions? See none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Right. Most curious. Then we went one one slash ten guys one forty two from the sheriff. So forth. Second. Who the second? Questions? Mr. Uh, we're continuing with the um, Chevys, uh, for bids and specifications on these. No, uh, Dean Roger County Sheriff, we we haven't had uh, Chevy as our primary four wheel go for several oh, years. I'm well, thinking of the blades that are that large. Well, blade. the towel. Oh. I'm sorry. Um, that's going to be up to the townships if they want to help. If that's what they're interested in, they want to um, pay you know the, their, their share of the cost of something like that. 
uh, we would we will pursue that. And I will be talking with the council to see if that's the direction they want to go. Uh, otherwise, we'll be going uh, with the new Ford uh, police interceptor. Anybody else? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? That motion carries. Can you win one one slash one all dash one forty three from chair? Moved and supported. Questions? Mr. Stone. Sheriff, how, how many of those uh, camera systems are you purchasing? Well, actual uh, in-car cameras, uh, we would need uh, 26 for our patrol fleet, for our Merc fleet. Um, but there is also some uh, platform uh, software needs that we will, we will need, you know, to link up with our well, desktop computers, for instance. You know, there's a there's a technology out there that would allow me to watch a watch a camera from my desktop if something's breaking, and uh, I can pull up on my desktop and shift the camera. Up on their so we have at this point there are no cameras. We have no cameras in our cruiser. Okay, you know I remember when I was on the city council in Norton Shores when we had those cameras. They come in handy. People, um, it happens periodically where somebody says the officer did something usually right on the camera. They wear microphones to the yeah. system, yeah. so from here you can't see anything. Yeah, this this uh, package would include uh, the audio. Capabilities for cameras. And, uh, you know, I mean, cameras are just, there's, there's basically, quite honestly, there's an expectation amongst the public that we now have them. I get requests from the media all the time for release of a dash cam on an incident. And, you know, uh, they like when I respond that it's not available, we don't have them. They're like, really? Are you kidding me? Um, and it's a huge, it is a huge risk management tool in terms of uh, avoiding risk and, and minimizing risk. In a, in a lot of ways, it's a training tool. Um, very, you know. Originally, when I was when I was a patrolman and cameras first kind of started to become popular, we were concerned it was going to be used as a, as a disciplinary tool. And quickly, we found out that, as you mentioned, it's more often to our advantage to have them than not have them for for a number of reasons. Mr. Gerzinski, uh, yeah, you use it as a risk management tool. Our officers are equipped with tasers, so we have one for everybody. There's departments that don't have them at all. And to me, they seem to be a very good effective. Um, our our uniform patrol staff are all issued tasers, uh, and our full time court services staff have tasers, and then we have two available in the jail that the jail command officers have access to. None for the people uh, we go through as we come in the door? Not at this point, no. no. Anybody else? Any in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Aye. 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 If I may, I was looking at the reason our auditor engaged the letter. <coughs> And it's pretty standard <clears throat> um, from what I've seen before. But on one of the pages, they discuss what will not be audited. And one of the um, is the uh, schedule of funding process for employees' contributions to the pension plan. And we've had a number of questions about buying time into the pension plan. And, and I think MERS was going to do an opinion on that. I just wondered if it wouldn't be nice to also have our auditors, and this is very standard because they can't hit everything in detail every year, but I'd like to see the two possibly uh, be combined. And it's on actually the first page, but they listed three things that they're not going to look at. That happened to be one of them. Okay? Just and the, nothing unusual about it. Right. Just, been on our minds lately. Any other old business? What about new business? Uh, Mr. Ringel? I, not really new business here, but um, just something I'd like to mention that uh, uh, Nancy Waters' uh, appointment will be ending for uh, 
this year and this year with the MSU uh, District Board. And if there's someone that is interested in, in seeing about that, uh, contact Cam or myself. It's, it's four meetings a year somewhere in the West State. Mr. Scholder? I had two items. One um, involves the meeting that was scheduled for Thursday, the community development meeting. I just got an email an hour ago from the presenter, Schultz Transport, um, who is unable to make it, so I would like to cancel the uh, community development and strategic planning meeting for um, So move and second. That's the meeting and second. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the second item is the uh, Mona Shores girls golf team is the one the state championship. I'd like to have a resolution. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Motion carries. Any other new business? Mr. Spicer? It really isn't new business, it's just other business. I happen to have tickets for a performance tonight at the Froenthal for the Collins Fund. It is without charge. It is a musical performance, and um, I don't know how many I have left. I've been remiss in getting them out to the public. If any of you would like them, um, it's an excellent program. It's an off-Broadway production. Starts at 7.30, or it actually starts at, uh, you have to be in your seats by 10, after, 10 minutes after 7. Uh, it's virtually a sellout, except for these uh, 18 tickets or 12 tickets or whatever is left. Uh, so if you're at all interested, it's a great program, and um, even those people in the audience, if anyone would like them. If not, I would. Okay, great, wonderful. If not, I'm going to go out and turn them in. Because there are people who wait. You want to? Okay. Do I have an excuse not to go to the fair board meeting? <laughs> yeah, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> I will excuse <laughs> Public comment. Anybody in the audience like to address us on a new topic? Mr. Riley. My name is Jim Riley. I live at Jim's Stores. Um, as far as the MERS generic purchase, um, frankly, I'm surprised it seems to be such a mystery to most. Um, we did discuss it on my radio show Sunday with the, uh, direct, uh, the Deputy Director of Human Resources at Oakland County. Uh, of course, they don't allow that kind of purchase, but essentially what the county has been allowing employees to do, and more recently a, uh, a voted out county commissioner to also do, is to buy an annuity. Uh, in the most recent case that just happened a couple weeks ago, the uh, county employee paid something like $15,000 uh, to get the kind of return that this most recent employee uh, got from the taxpayers, by the way, um, you'd have to pay about three times, two or three times the $15,000 to, to purchase an annuity in the market today from a, a financial firm located in the scheme. There's probably five or ten or maybe 20 that could do the same thing. Now, it's clear that these employees would not be making these, writing these checks if somebody didn't say, hey, this is a good deal. They're not stupid. So the information is there. It's easily gotten. You can believe me, or you can just go to any firm that does sell annuities. Certainly it's it's irresponsible, it seems to me, for this group to be uh, writing checks, uh, approving these things without really knowing what they cost, given that it is so the information is so easily attainable. Um, I'm really disappointed. <laughs> not for the first time. Well, again, I, I, Keith isn't here, but that's a that's a mis that's a mischaracterization of what the actual purchase does. Uh, I respectfully disagree with you, and for that reason, uh, I'm just not going to go any further. But that's a mischaracterization of what that is. You, it is not possible to compare a single purchase annuity for an individual, and I don't want you to respond. Well, you're talking directly to me. I, Am I supposed to be silent? Well, it, I'll Maybe talk we to can you. talk about it afterwards. 
We'll talk about it after. Entertain a motion to solo. Second. Move and second. Adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Who wants these tickets? How much are they? I've only been in the financial business for 30 years. But you know what? Bullies will be bullies. I don't have a problem. Let's see. Musical. Yeah.